John, I am so excited to spend some time with you here today. This has been a long time coming. We've been talking about having you on the show, and I think it's just perfect that we could have you for our Father's Day weekend episode, because who better than you to represent what is most important in both of our lives on, you know, really from the standpoint of being family men first and businessmen second. So thanks so much for being here. And there's, there's just tons of things we can unpack today, but uh, so glad to have you here, buddy. Dude, my face is already hurting from the smiling we did prior to hitting record. <laughs> yeah, we, we actually probably should have recorded what was earlier, but maybe not. I don't know. It's, it's always a good sign, man, when my face starts to cramp. There are a few people who that happens around and you're one of them for sure. Well, thank you. I, I feel very uh, similarly about you and how much we laugh and the fun that we have, the fun our families have together, the fun you and I have together just one on one and uh, just, it's been cool to see our friendship grow over the last 20 years. It's been over 20 years that we have known each other. And the cool part to me is that we started out as single guys. I mean, we hung out when we were dating people, we hung out when we had breakups. Uh, and then, you know, it was cool seeing you and your wife, Tatiana start dating. And, uh, you got a chance to see Jennifer and I start dating and then our families become friends and our kids become friends. It's just incredible. And then we moved to the same city that really sealed the deal, man. That did. And that took some plotting. Tatiana yeah. and I were yeah. definitely behind the scenes plotting on that. So uh, we, we can definitely, you know, thank her big time. Dude, I, you know, when you think about the history, I, I think it's one of the most beautiful things about deep friendships is being able to look back and see somebody's journey and have that front row seat to their life. But uh, you know, one of my favorite pictures when it ever pops up in the memories is that one where you were in Philly. It was one of Tatiana and I's first dates and you were, we, we all went to a concert together and we have this great picture that was really representative of who we were at that time. <laughs> It definitely is. <laughs> definitely fun to look back and see the progress. For sure. Yeah, that was great. We just, we had so much fun. And it was so fun seeing you at the beginning stages and even hearing your insight like, hey, I think this could be the one. I know it's really early and I'm yeah. maybe I'm crazy, but this girl lights me up the way no one else has. So it was cool getting a front row seat, pun intended, uh, for that cool, amazing relationship and what turned into uh, an amazing marriage. Yeah, thank you. So tell us about you, John. What, give, give us a little backstory. I, I know that uh, the people watching and listening would love to learn more about you. I mean, I know you at an intimate level, um, and I want to get some of those stories here today. But at the same time, you've done great for so many people. You, you have served the world in a way that resonates with me and with many in our community because you are service focused, you are uh, human life focused, and you just want to give people the best experience they can during their time here on this earth. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I think the big pieces of the puzzle that might be interesting for folks is that well, I grew up in a military family, so I moved around a lot. And I think that moving to different areas uh, actually was was not only difficult, of course, for the obvious reasons, but it really helped me to learn how to make friends, how to adapt, how to be flexible, which has served me my entire life. And, and that's a big part of my childhood. I was also, um, I, I went through a period of, you know, of, I went from a straight A student in 10th grade to almost failing every class in 11th grade. And there was a lot of pain associated with my earlier years as well, just feeling like I didn't know how to fit in. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what my gifts were in the world. I lacked a lot of confidence and a lot of belief in myself. Uh, I then found Cutco, which is where we built our friendship. And that environment was so healthy for me because it really exposed me to the world of personal growth. I mean, hanging out with a bunch of people in their 20s who are focused on reading books and bettering themselves. And that environment saved me for, you know, for lack of making it sound too dramatic, I mean, I don't know where the road would have led me had I not been a part of that that family, you know, which really is a so many of my greatest friends even to this day are are from that world. And then and then when I was, you know, 30, I I stepped away from that corporate role and I had moved into wanting to pursue speaking and coaching and writing, running the front row foundation, which is very similar to make a wish. 
which you and I have, along with our friends, contributed to and built over the years, both with time, energy, effort, insights, finances. We, I'm so happy of the 15 years of work that we've done in the charitable space. That led to a book called The Front Row Factor, which was everything you could learn about living life from people fighting for it. And then with that front row theme kind of running through my life, I had achieved some level of success as a speaker and as a coach and as a writer, but I realized that I was a businessman who happened to have a family, not a family man who happened to have a business. And my calendars were not lining up with my priorities. My son was six. It was always one more busy season to make it through. Always one more like, oh, now that I make 20,000 a speech, how could I say no? And it just was so enticing and felt like that was how I needed to serve the family, but realized that I was never going to get back that time. And that's when I started Front Row Dads to surround myself with people that were doing what I wanted to do, that I wanted to have conversations around putting family first. And that was five years ago. And here we are. Now, I am the hugest fan of Front Row Dads, as you know. Um, I, my goal is to always be your biggest spokesperson. Um, but before we- And get you into- are, by the way. You <laughs> definitely like, dude, you're, yeah. So thank you. <laughs> my pleasure. That's the thing that I believe in at the deepest level. And, and I'm excited to talk about that here today. Before we get to it, though, you are so humble that you have failed to share with everyone how great of a speaker you are. And by the way, I've seen you speak many times. I think you're one of the best speakers I know, but you would be doing us a disservice if you didn't let us know the accolades and awards that you got for being best speaker of the year. So share some of that, please. Well, let me, let me first start with the failure. <laughs> so the <laughs> failure was that I left this corporate job and I wanted to do speaking and I, I, I spent money and I went into debt basically trying to become a speaker. And it was, so I really want to honor the path. If anybody's going down that road of trying to get into that space, that it can be very difficult. And it was difficult. There was a lot of learning to be done, but it did work eventually. Like after, you know, about a year and a half or two years, I won uh, a college speaker of the year award that really set my career off. And then I made a couple hundred grand and it was like, Oh, now we're off to the races. And then I won that award again and I stayed, I worked in the college market to begin and then eventually kind of transitioned to the corporate market. But uh, it, was, it, I, it was a passion. I loved it. And I think the reason I loved it when I look back now is I remember being at a Tony Robbins event and having Tony speak in a way that just moved me. Like I entered that room, one version of John Roman and left another. And that change stuck with me. You know, there, there were things, decisions that were made during presentations that shifted my life. Because when somebody really works at communicating a message, when they work at moving you at a core level, they really, they do master that craft. You know, just like anything, just like anybody who chooses to be a world-class investor or a world-class anything, they work at it. And, And there's a lot of nuances. Well, I just wanted to make other people feel the way I felt you know, when, when great people took the stage and I could name a hundred other people who've taken the stage and moved my, my heart. And then, uh, and then that got me to move my legs. So. Well, I think that your story there is incredible. You went into massive debt. You were able to get out of that debt, which is just fantastic. And here's the thing that I probably admire most is that as your trajectory was going up, your, your stock was at the highest level because you were college speaker of the year, I think back to back years. And like everyone wanted you, you had endless opportunities. You could have scaled your speaking. In fact, I just spoke with someone right before our episode here today that uh, is making between one and $2 million a year just in speaking. And so we know the direction that that could have gone. And I just think it's the coolest thing and just admire the fact that you could step away from the best income you've ever had, the only income that you've known in that space to just say, hey, it's taken me away from my family too much. Therefore, I'm done. And you went cold turkey and you built a business that made no money at the beginning and didn't make much money for a long time. Uh, because you had conviction that this is where you wanted to be. These were the men you wanted to surround yourself with, that this is who you wanted to become. I mean, I love how you share that you started this 
because you wanted to become better in this space, a better husband, a better father, just better on the family front. And I just think that that is incredible. I'm never going to write the book on smooth transitions from one business to the next. (laughs) Nobody's ever sought my counsel for that. But I think it's the way I had to do it. You know, when I look at it, I, I get people who build better parachutes and maybe build better bridges between one business and the next. But the way that I work, I think I need to, I need to do it that way. Yeah, you're, you're so authentic that the moment you feel out of alignment, you're like, hey, it doesn't matter how much money I'm making or that my family needs this to survive. Like, this is not serving me. I can still provide for my family. I will figure it out, but I can no longer be here. And yeah. you're great at just making that decision, pulling the ripcord and going, uh, you know, to use your parachute example. Yeah, yeah. It, and, and luckily it has worked out in the front row dad business right now. And really thanks to you. And I couldn't wait to get to this part in our conversation. And I knew we would land here, but, you know, what's so cool about front row dads versus anything I've ever built in my life. And I was saying this to Tatiana on the plane ride back from our trip recently. As I, was, I just looked at her and I go, we are in the greatest season right now. Like I get seasons and I get, I I feel very lucky. I mean, I've definitely worked. I've put in a lot of work, but I also feel very fortunate. I think that a lot of things have lined up beyond my control that have allowed me to be in this beautiful season of life right now. I think it would be ignorant of me to, to not notice those things that are beyond my control, but boy, it's like, I was two weeks in Mexico, didn't do a seat that any work, nothing. The business was growing. We had new members. We had our best online summit, you know, to date, the scores, the ratings, the feedback was just off the charts. And I said to Tatiana, I go, I can't believe this life that we've built. And then when I trace that back to why, why is that? It's like really great mentors like you in my life who bring this conversation up. Like, what does it mean to build a lifestyle in your world. You know, our mutual friend and bandmate in Front Row Dads, Tim Nikolai, talking to me about, hey, you know, here's how to build a business around your life and watching Hal do it with his world right now. And that, you know, this idea of really being a family man with a business is not my thing. That's our thing. And because of the conversation, because of the dialogue, because of the repetitive dialogue, it's finally like, it's finally happening for the first time in my life. It's finally happening the way that I've dreamt it to be. I've, there's always been little wins along the way, but you know, at 45 years old with an 11 year old and a six year old, I'm looking at my world and I'm just smiling saying, dude, this has been years in the making and a lot of mistakes along the way. And that's the beautiful thing about the life as an entrepreneur is you could have messed things up however many times early on, but when you finally get it right, it can solve for a lot of those mistakes. And it's just exciting for me as your friend seeing this, but also as a fellow bandmate. And and by the way, when we talk about our band, this is there are four dads that Uh, are in our sphere that meet once a month and there's accountability and there's catching up. And it's, to me, it's like one of the highlights of the month and just the consistency that we get. I mean, we sit down for two and a half hours straight once a month and we talk about the highs, the lows, how can we improve? Can I have accountability? Hey, I did this and it worked really well. Hey, I had this epic blunder. Don't do this or I could use your support. Uh, I mean, it's just amazing. And then, you know, being a member of the tribe, you know, I clear my schedule for this. You know, this has been to me one of the most important things in my life that um, almost everything else takes a backseat to these uh, events, to these retreats. Just I love pouring into people and I love being poured into by people. And I love that it's, it's people that, have the same value system as me where they really truly are aspiring and proactively putting family first before everything and anything else. All right. Now, look, I know this is supposed to be an interview for me, but I got to say this because I just, I would not normally hijack somebody's show like this when they're interviewing me, but hold on. 
dude, I just need your audience to know something about you that behind the scenes. All right. So this is, I've been impressed by lots of things that you've done over the years. It's impressive. The net worth that you've built. It's impressive that your book became a wall street journal bestseller, but all those things are like almost not shocking to me because it's like, dude, you're a competitor. You're smart. Like they're almost to be expected, right? Like I'm like, ah, oh, just the way you play volleyball, like, dude, you show up all the time, ready to go. And your list of accomplishments is impressive. Do what you accomplished in Cutco and then how you built this. I mean, just saw it's, it's great, but do you know where I've been most impressed? And this is what I want your audience to know. When we showed up to our band meeting, right? This is, so this once a month meeting, you, when you, when you shared with us that in the course of the week where you got back from this retreat, so you're, you know, you're, you have a death in the family. You have another family member who has a stroke. You have uh, a wife who has gone to the aid of family. You have a daughter who you're homeschooling and watching. And you have a, was, it was your back <laughs> that was your back was giving you real problems. So but one of the things that I've noticed is that you handled all of that and you still showed up for Savannah. You showed up, you were supportive of your wife. And so what I'm getting at is that I've seen this multiple times where you're like, even through your book launch, even through all this stuff, you, you, you shared with us that you still held your family time. And that if you needed to get something done, you were figuring out other ways to do it. You hired an EA, you were waking up earlier, you, you were finding ways to get it done, but you weren't sacrificing that family time. And dude, I, you, you've impressed me for years, but this last year, you've really, really impressed me with how you juggled so many things. In fact, sometimes I'm, I even think to myself, I'm really close with Justin and I still don't know how he does it. Like I'm intimately involved in his schedule, his life. Like, but I still, sometimes I shrug my shoulders. I go, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's impressive, dude. Well, thank you for the kind words. And, you know, I, I feel very lucky and uh, privileged to have the community, the support system that I have, the people that um, I can pour into, but when stuff kind of comes up that they pour into me. And so I just feel blessed. I, I feel like when there is a storm, uh, I, I just have learned that I can weather it. You know, I, I, I feel like uh, there's a season for everything. And even in tough seasons, there are silver linings and there are ways that you can still show up for people. And um, there are outlooks that you can have. I firmly believe in, in just having a positive outlook and finding the good in whatever the lessons are. I don't even want to call it bad stuff. I mean, they're just lessons uh, that we get to learn from. And so I feel like in some regards, my mentality, the way I think about things is a little different. And uh, it allows me to navigate through tough seasons, tough situations, uh, maybe a little bit easier than if I had a different outlook. Dude, I, and, and, you know, it's interesting is I can even see how it would appear to be like a facade. Like it would just be like this act that you've been putting on for years and years and years. But the harder I dig and the more that I know you at your core, I just really believe that's who you are. Like at your core, you're genuinely that way. Because, because, dude, I don't think anybody could hide it for that long at every, like you just, it, it's, it's really impressive. So, and it's, uh, but that's been so positive for me too, because by seeing you handle so much and do it with such grace, as you know, I've been working on emotional mastery, like not losing my cool. I, I, I do not claim the same badge of just keeping my cool. I, it's actually something that's really been a weakness of mine. Um, and I've lost it many times and been very disappointed in myself as a dad, uh, in a lot of ways. Um, but boy, when you see somebody give you an example, and it's interesting, remember at the retreat when John Kane was like, I pulled my son Johnny in the basement and here's what I said, yeah. dude, it's like somebody else giving you the language. I, it's given me the language of when I pull Tiger aside now, it's like I find myself channeling John Kane or channeling Justin Donald when I'm doing things because you see it and you can model that. And you've claimed that you're like, 
I may not be the world's most original creator, but boy, I can see somebody, I can see a pattern of success and I know how to replicate that in my own way. And I think that's what I'm doing from you. Well, I appreciate that. And I mean, I've learned so much from you as well. And, and one of the things that I love about you is how just genuine and open and vulnerable you are. I mean, you are so quick to be able to admit where you mess up. And I think that that allows other people to, to kind of lower their walls and, and be at a place where they can be totally honest, totally present. So I just learn a lot through you know, the way that you show up and the way that you facilitate. And I, I think you mentioned something earlier that I want to touch on. And, and that was about prioritizing family first. And, and I just had a realization um, years ago that there's nothing more important, like in your deathbed, what are the, the things that you're going to think about? It's probably not that you wish you made more money because you're dying you don't need more money. It's probably not that you wish that you worked more or build a, built a bigger business. Um, it, it's probably not like, I wish I got more stuff or a bigger house, or I lived in, you know, this zip code of this town or that I had a vacation home. It, it's from what I have heard, it's that I value and wish that I had more time with these people. I wish I wouldn't have said this. I wish I would have fixed this. I wish I would have spent time with those that I loved the most, even more. And so I've had a few situations that have really hit me really resonated. And it's like, why am I spending all this time? And it's really easy. Sometimes as hard charging guys. And by the way, hard charging women too, are going to be able to relate to this. But I think guys even more so in that it's easier to default into work because it's what we know it's what we're good at we can show up and we can have success there's probably some ego wrapped into that there's some significance most certainly where you just know you can get an outcome and you're well equipped but it's not as easy to default to family maybe the thing you don't know as well how, how well you spend quality time or that you choose that over business so for me i just wanted to get boundaries in place that were that basically could be my rules that I wasn't going to move past that. Like I could be really flexible and hardworking during my day, but there's such limited time. I mean, think about how many weekends we have with our kids uh, before they're out of the house and how many vacations we get and how many dinners. And so if your kids are in school, you're already at a point where they're gone eight hours a day. Even if they're homeschooled, they're probably occupied in a way where you're not interacting and involved in a full-time capacity. Um, and my wife and I try and kind of split it where I'm one third, she's two thirds for this season of homeschooling that we're doing. But even there, I feel like I don't have enough time. I don't get enough time. So if I let my work bleed into that family time, I just feel like I'd be losing so many opportunities and such relationships. And so I just decided a long time ago, if stuff falls through the cracks. It's going to be work that falls through the cracks. It's going to be other stuff. It's just not going to be family. I'm not willing to, uh, I'm just not willing to let those relationships suffer. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, your, your tribe of men are so great for that because they support that lifestyle. They support, you know, those mantras and, and those boundaries and you come around other men that are doing it just like that. And you'll find people that are doing it better. And it's like, Ooh, I'm not doing that. Or, Ooh, I have my phone on me too often. And I know my daughter sees me. I've got to leave it in my office. Uh, th there's just so much that you learn. Every time we do a retreat, I walk away and I say, wow, how I have so many nuggets that I took away from this that are going to help me be a better family man. You know, when I, I used to think of lifestyle, whenever I even hear you talk about lifestyle investor, it's easy. And obviously because the word investor is there and it, it is a like, it's a night. It, the concept is rooted in having the finances to be able to do the things you want to do to buy back your time, right? As you've often talked about. And, and now what I see is I see you take that brand of lifestyle investing and realizing that it's, it's really a much broader spectrum of what it even means to be an investor, right? And how there's an investing fi in finances, but there's all the investments we make in our family, 
in our children and our wives and in our relationships. Like you're, not, I wish we could put a number to it, but you know, you have a, a number of what you've achieved financially. That's really impressive. But what I've also seen, and I'm, I'm, I'm equally as impressed by is your investment into your relationships. Like you actually might be, I don't know what you're better at building relationships or building financial wealth because dude, it's like, uh, how you are able to connect with people so quickly and, and go deep fast and develop your relationships. It's, um, and, and, and not just with your peers, but with Savannah too. Like when you talk about where you're most proud, one of the things that was so fun for me this last year was you talking about how Savannah for a while would be like, maybe mom's the favorite, <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. like, oh, yeah. and then when, when you started to see some wins on your side of like dad, you know, being called upon, that was like where you really lit up. And if people could see you now, if they're watching this <laughs> on YouTube, dude, that's where your smile really, really, you know, takes a lot of light is in that space. So it's good to see investing from a lot of angles and then it's not just financially, although that's a big piece of it. Cause even like our road trip that we're doing this summer is made possible because of our financial situation That's and right, the business right. that we built. Yeah. And I love that you open this up because you're investing, whether you realize it or not, you're investing money, you're investing time, you're investing energy, you're investing in some way, shape or form. You may be doing it on autopilot and I recommend and when I say you, I mean, whoever is, is listening, watching, but you can get even more out of your investment or return on investment by being intentional of where you're spending your time, where you're placing your resources, your capital. And so I love that you bring that up because, you know, th this episode and really the lifestyle investor in general I don't want it just to be about investing uh, in terms of the financial aspect. I feel like I have areas that I can help people and I know that I can bring guests on that are fantastic at this, but that's just one component of it. The lifestyle is more important. That's why I say lifestyle investor, not investor's lifestyle. You know, it's, I, I want people to build the lifestyle that's ideal for them. And, and, um, and I think that our brands line up very well. When I think about lifestyle, I think about front row dads. And I feel like that is the lifestyle I want. And you're living it wonderfully. Uh, I mean, what's so fun is seeing you in this season where you're traveling more than you have and for more extended time than ever before. You've got a business that's booming. Um, you know, financially, I know that you're in a, a really exciting place. And you recently bought a home, uh, which is cool. And for those of you that don't know, Austin is just the craziest, hottest market. <laughs> I mean, I mean, from the day that John signed on the dotted line of owning this home, even though he hasn't moved back into it, he's doing a lease back. This home has appreciated uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. I mean, it's just incredible. The, the, the market, the home, the location, you, and your home is killer. I just cannot wait to do fun events and, and, you know, have just, you know, fun family parties. And uh, it, it's the perfect hanging and hosting type of place. But now you have this super cool season because you can't move in yet. So you just got back from Mexico a couple of weeks there. And you're about to embark on like a three month journey. I'm so excited. So share some of this because this is lifestyle at its finest. And you're doing it with your family. Yeah. Oh man. Um, thrilled, dude. We got a trailer. We're going to pull it behind the van. This is very low key. This is not rock star tour bus, you know, $1 million 45 foot pusher or, you know, type situation. This is, this is a 17 foot trailer with a bed for my wife and I and bunk beds for the kids and little toilet, little shower, little kitchen. You know, this is, uh, this is, this is small investment you know, relatively speaking, this thing was like 18 grand and dude, we bought the, or we, we were going to buy a Thule thing, but by the way, shout out to David and Tracy Osborne who bought us a Thule rack for the top of the, of the van, which is cool. So nice. we put all our gear in and we just hit the road. And the mission is to 
the mission is to go create adventures every day. And we're keeping the mission really simple. There is no schedule that we're going to follow. There's what I, my only goal is to not lose my cool. That's my only goal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll have lots of little sub goals underneath of that, but the big one is to not lose my cool. And I, I'm using this as an opportunity to show my kids how to interpret failure, how to deal with adversity. I'm putting myself directly in the line of fire, knowing that things are going to go wrong, knowing this is going to be hard on me so that, and hard on them, you know, with close proximity and without a lot of our amenities and things like that. Like I, I want to rough it a little bit. Cause I think that you know, a lot of my goal, my life's goals were about getting to a level where I could do things that were exciting that would cost money, right? Like a, a, it was like, hey, how can we afford that private school? Or how can we afford to go on this trip? And, and, and now it's like, well, how can we show them how to re remove a lot of stuff and to live, you know, very simply um, and to like, we're doing, you want to hear the crazy, you probably know this, I probably told you this, but this is like, for many, this will sound nuts. We're doing no the word screens. Crazy, so I'm in. No screens <laughs> all summer. Yes. We're doing a screen-free summer. So That's nobody, amazing. there's no iPads, there's no phones, there's no cartoons, there's no video games, there's none of that. This is a screen-free summer. Now, I will say that I don't like to ever say never. So, dude, if we go to a friend's house and they're watching a movie and the kids watch it, I'm I'm not gonna put my foot down in somebody else's house or if we're looking at a map on the screen, of course, those are like some exceptions to the rule, but, uh, or doing homework on a park that we're going to go see or something like that, a state park, but the kids are not going to have video games or movies and things like that. And we're going to just, we're going to get, we're going to plug in to the family at a very deep level. And, you know, one of the things that's going to be, I could talk by the way, for two hours, just about this summer and like all of the things I want to do and you know, like how I envision it. And at the same time, loosely holding these these visions because knowing that a lot's going to change, but like, here's one that we got from the dad's retreat. All right. So for anybody out there listening who has kids, this will particularly apply to you, but I want you to listen also, if you don't have kids to this concept, because you could probably apply this in other areas of your life. And here's the idea. Tiger's turning 12 this summer. And the goal is to create 12 mentors that I introduced to him over the course of the year, that would be like a rite of passage idea. And that my dad is going to be the first one that will happen right around Tiger's 12th birthday. And he's going to spend time with my dad. And then I've talked to my dad about this already. And my dad's going to write him a letter. And I think what I'll do is I'll have the, the people who spend a day with him write the letter later. And at the end of his 12th year. So on his 13th birthday, I'll then present him with the book of letters from everybody that he met with over the course of the year. So 12 mentors for his 12th year. But dude, you know, I got to tell you, man, that, you know, a lot of these things are coming because of, they're coming up, these ideas because of the community, because we're taking time out to connect as men and have these conversations. Like that's that, by the way, that idea comes from Ned right? Ned, yep. Ned Shout and also Chris Coggin and lunch with those two guys, um, you know, talking about rite of passage. And that was an epic conversation that is now going to likely change my son's life forever. Like what's the value of that one meal, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's an incredible, but that doesn't happen without that time. And what I also have faith in is that when we talk about just carving out time and then having faith, like I'm, I'm loosely holding on to what this summer could be because I know that just by being with my family, I know that if I sit in that space where I'm asking deep questions and I'm listening carefully and I'm ready for whatever adventure comes up and that the whole goal is to just do life together, that the work I've been doing on myself for the last 25 years is going to help me in those moments. Like I've been preparing for this summer for 25 years making mistakes, learning, reading, conversing with people. And this is the time, man. This is, this is the time to go have these adventures. So I can't wait. And uh, yeah, I, it's going to be exciting. That is so cool. I'm thrilled uh, for you. I can't wait to hear about it. You know, obviously in something like this, anyone that has done like super extended time with family that, you know, just know that there are ups and there are downs. We already know that, but <laughs> you know, the overall like big picture of it is just epic. And Matthew Kelly talks about something and 
uh, one of his books called Carefree Timelessness. Yeah. And that has just really stuck with me over the years. And it's just this idea of just having like untimed plan, you know, just, just time where you're, you can do whatever and connect and hang out and be present, be in the moment. There's no demands. You're not checking your phone. Yeah. <laughs> I love this lack of screen time. We're, we're already big proponents of that in general. We do very, very few screens um, at all. And we'll do like our movie night uh, once a week, generally. Sometimes we don't get it inside the week, but generally it's once a week, but that's it. I mean, we don't really do a lot of screens. And I love that uh, that the fun can be found in nature and being outside. And uh, w- one of the things that I have also loved seeing is this whole shift that my daughters had. And I've seen this in other kids too, where they go from like, oh, I'm bored <laughs> to like figuring out how to have yeah. fun and how to do things and how to explore. And they become more resourceful in that, where they don't rely on a screen to stop the boredom, they're able to, to be resourceful and creative and that relieves the boredom. And they learn to get into this place where they are not bored. They're curious and they're adventurous. And I just love that. I think that's going to do wonders. Um, and for anyone listening that is asking the question, cause it's, it's tough to shift away from screens. Once you start them, it's so worth it. And it's so wonderful. And there's so many dividends to it. Yeah. I mean, look, being a parent is scary if you're if you haven't practiced it. So if you've taken the role that you're like the provider of the family and you make money and that maybe your partner is the caretaker of the kids, then if you have no experience, if you're not plugged in, if you're not in the game, then it's going to be real. It's going to feel really disastrous. You're not going to know what questions to ask at dinner. I mean, sometimes kids are brutal. Like you ask a question and they don't answer and you're like, oh, this isn't working. I don't know how to do this. I'm going to go back to work. And it's and, 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 but like most things, like if, if you've never invested in mobile home parks, if you've never bought the rights to music, if you've never participated in big deals, if they haven't, you know, if somebody's brand new to you, like the, your, to your mastermind, your programs, like these are things that you're going to have to plug in and just learn. You're going to have to be uncomfortable for a while. And I think that with my kids, the same thing, like it took me two weeks in Mexico, it took me like five days to get out of work. Like I was waking up, my brain's like, I got to solve that problem at work. I got to do this thing. And then eventually at the end of the two weeks, I was totally out of work. And then I got back home and it was like, all right, back home, time to get to work. And Tatiana goes, you're having a hard time getting back to work, aren't you? I was like, yeah, I've got all this like t- ocean, you know, my six-year-old's like, you want to play army man? And I'm like, yes, I don't want to go back to work. Like I want to, because I had exercised that muscle, <clears throat> I had gained momentum and that just like your investments, like gaining momentum where you're your money's making you more money. And you're like, ah, this is what it's about. When you press for a while, when you invest for a while, when you learn for a while, when you stick after it, kids are the same thing. All of a sudden you're like, oh, I know what they need now. I know how to talk to them. I know how to discipline them. I know how to, I know how to be a dad. And it's like, you know, whether or not you're being a great dad or mom, you know it. You totally know it. Now you're going to have that moments, even when you think you're killing it, you're going to have moments where you fail. You're going to slip. You're going to fall on your face. It happened on the trip. I yelled at my kids and I posted about it. I was like, Phil, I went to bed tonight feeling like a bad dad, right? Because I just lost my cool. Um, but boy, dude, it feels like, it's like when I, we go, I'm going to go full circle here. We go back to Tatiana. I remember learning that when it comes to marrying somebody, like, you know, how do you know that she's the right person or he's the right person? It's like when you don't have to ask. And it's like speaking. I'm going to connect a lot of dots here. I remember speaking. When you get off stage, like, how do you know if you gave a great speech? You won't have to ask, was it a great speech? Because people are going to be tripping over themselves to get to you to be like, that changed my life. Like, you're going to know that you hit it out of the park. And the same with your kids. And if you're not feeling that, invest more in your family. Invest more time. Invest more energy. Invest more and be willing to fail fast you know, and that you can pivot and grow and then, you know, and then get to the end of your life and be a true lifestyle investor. I love it, man. You really have just built this incredible life and you're doing it. You're living this lifestyle. You're getting out of work mode. You're totally relaxing. In fact, what you said reminded me of a Ted talk. Uh, I think it's called say yes. The year Uh, of yes, Shonda Rhimes. 
Yeah. And, and it, it, that had such a huge impact on me because I remember totally. watching that and I remember being like, well, it's the work day. I can't say yes. And that's just an epic blunder for me as a dad where like, you know, is, is work really more important than spending a little bit of time in a season where my daughter actually is asking me to do that, <laughs> yeah, so which won't that, always happen. Maybe. Right. So, yeah. that, I mean, that was a big eye opener. And so I just started being like, yeah, come on. And so I remember for a while, like this whole, like, you know, having your home office and, you know, recording and the kids and no. can, can you keep it quiet, you yeah. know, out there. And, and now I just, I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to let it roll. I mean, we'll just see what happens. And, uh, you know, if, if uh, Savannah jumps in here and, and wants to hang out, I'm just going to hang out. And she comes in on calls all the time. And you know what? Like, I just think that's a better space to be. I feel better about it. I feel better about her, like learning and being curious and that this isn't off limits, that it's on limits. And I want her to learn how to be an entrepreneur and how to learn how to communicate. And uh, and I want her to know that she's number one. And if she needs something that, you know, I'll be able to help her out. And so yeah. I just think I went about it the wrong way at the beginning, where I was protecting my time or my business or my office, and it just wasn't the right move. And I didn't feel good about it either. Yeah, yeah, it makes me it makes me uh, uh, question, could I do a podcast with Tiger? Tiger time, you know, uh, and we just released this show where he and I talk about what's working or what's not working in our relationship as a father and a son. It's really interesting. You should totally do that. I think that would yeah. be amazing. And by the way, even if you do it for no one other than yourself, exactly, that's unreal. But I know yeah. that people would get value from it. I, I've hey, actually uh, on that note, by the way, we did that this past year. That was like a win. I, I recently wrote out like all the wins for like the last 12 months. And one of them was having Tiger interview grandma and grandpa. And then grandma and grandpa interviewed Tiger. And we recorded those. And I'm like, that's going to be cool to look back on. That's really neat. I love that. I think that's cool. I think there's so much that you can do with you know, the, the gifts that you've been blessed with and, and just your platform that you have. But to think about what serves your family best. I think that that's so cool. And you had made a, a comment at this last retreat about how you, what you noticed, what you have done in the past is you made your business uh, to be in a way where it was in conflict with your marriage, right? Mm -hmm. So Tatiana would see front row dads as the enemy because it was taking your time, but then you figured out how to bridge that gap and how to allow front row dads to give you the time for more connection, more family, more uh, travel, more everything. And so it's neat to see that. But I, I wonder how many people watching and listening, you probably unconsciously, but maybe it's consciously are doing something that is in direct conflict with the thing that you could be or should be doing, or maybe want to do, or that your spouse wants you to do, or your kids want you to do. And how can you shift that to be the catalyst to be able to do those things mm -hmm. even better? You know, I, I want to give everybody like an idea that they could take away today and implement. And it's probably been one of my best ideas personally this last year. And I know, I know other people have adopted it and used it. So here, and here's what it is. It's actually learning to take our best investments in work and then bring them home. And a lot of our best investments in our life that lead to financial success, I think in many cases are about finding strengths and moving towards those, whether it's like the strength in a market or strength in a person, right? It's like, it's like, where's the genius zone? Where's the 80, 20 principle apply? Where's the little hinge that swings a big door, yada, yada, yada. Right. But it's like focusing on the strength and amplifying that. Well, we, we, we do that in business so well, we, a lot of every, you know, people are always learning how to do that. And uh, they're loving on business associates. They're calling on John Rulin to buy a mug for somebody, right? And, and give an epic gift that, you know, but yet with our families, and here's one of the big lessons I learned was that Tatiana came to me and she's like, yeah, you got this front row tattoo on your arm. You got this charity, you've raised millions of dollars. You've helped all these people. And she goes, sometimes I feel like you're more of a moment maker for other people than you are for your own family. Mm -hmm. I'm like, she's right. If you were to stack up all the time I've spent planning somebody else's front row experience versus her birthday or our trip or whatever, like it's, 
it's out of whack. I'm out trying to be famous, you know, in the world and I should be trying to be famous at home. And, and, and that was one of the big disconnects. So here's what I did. I started printing pictures every week, every month and uh, of my, my kids and of my wife. And I would write a personal note on the back and I would call out a strength. So like, I'd take a picture of my kids playing together and I'd write a note to Tiger, like, you're such a great big brother. It's great to see you leading Ocean and Ocean would be in his first jujitsu class. And I'm like, you're so brave. It's great to see you try new things. And I would hand them these pictures every week, every month, you know, just throughout the year as I would capture these photographs. And I was doing this kind of stuff at work, sending thank you notes to people. Hey, great job. Thanks for leading the team this week. But yeah, I'm not doing this at home. I'm not writing my wife any notes. I'm not writing my kids any notes. So there's so many things that your audience, who I know are hard charging, high performing people who want to, you know, to create a life for themselves. And they're, they're working hard to build that in, you know, that, that capital in many different ways. We, my, I feel like my mission is to first talk about it with our group try it myself and then share what's working and what's not with people. And this is one that's working. And uh, I got a whole long list of things that aren't working for me too, that I'm looking for answers for, but, (laughs) but this one is working, man. And it's just principles that work in business that need to work at home. I think that's incredible. And yeah, it's taking the thing that works so well in business. And it's like, why am I not doing it at home? (laughs) I mean, I should totally be doing this. In fact, I should be doing it this, this at home, even at the expense of not doing it at work. That's right. Uh, and so I love that. And by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm proof that you uh, do a great job of this because I have been over several times. <laughs> That's right. You got a picture. <laughs> and, and I got a picture with a note written on it that I've got, you know, saved in my little, uh, yeah. I've got this cool little chest that I put meaningful cards and, uh, you know, written words in, you know, anytime someone, you know, kind of shows up in a way and, and, Dude you know, really yeah. moves me with their words. I, I save every last bit of it. And so I've got that picture. You're playing piano with Tiger, right? Wasn't that That's the one right. where you're playing piano with Tiger? And I have one right. also of you reading to the kids on the couch. I have a picture of you reading to the kids. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. And to me, the like family extends beyond your immediate family. So you've got your immediate family and they come first, but we should also help support our friends, our closest friends, family as well, because we're going to offer something that, that is going to be received differently. So I could say the same message as you're saying to Tiger or to Ocean, and they might receive it uh, differently or just, you know, in a season, it might resonate. And you're like, I said the same thing, but they heard it from a different voice. And I see it with my daughter where you'll get down on, you know, her eye level and you'll talk to her and you'll say things that I've said. And she'll be like, yeah, John told me this. And I want to be like, I've told you this a million times, but <laughs> <laughs> the reality is it's, it's the right timing from someone else. And it just is significant. And so I think there's a power in helping to build other people's families and pour in and, and give feedback and, and really share highlights and, and what you appreciate about them, especially when they're not your kids. Yeah. And so I love just thinking about building community where you have a lot of intentional parents parenting each other's kids. That to me is the game changer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great. I, I, I know it's been said different ways, but it's like, yeah, like, you know, good dads take care of their kids, but amazing dads take care of all kids. Mm. No, or any kid. That's good. And something else that really uh, has stood out to me, and I shared this again at the last dad's retreat, and I learned this from Jim Shields, who wrote uh, the, the family board meeting, which is a fantastic little book. And it's that you're homeschooling, whether you realize it or not. And that is so powerful. And that got me to really shift and, and think I need to pay attention to how I'm showing up because I'm being observed, whether I recognize it or not. I'm teaching whether I realize it or not. So am I intentional with the message that I want to communicate? Are my actions uh, directly uh, sharing and showing the what, what it is that I believe and what it is that I want to teach because they're going to pay attention to what they see much more than what they hear. And often 
if you're in contrast in those, that's even worse because then you're hypocritical, which we're all going to be at some point in time. Uh, so you got to let yourself off the hook, but as best you can be in alignment. I think that's that there's just power in that. Yeah. So true, man, you have created such a cool community that I have been able to learn a ton in and I get to show up better for my family because I know you, I'm around you, I'm around your family and I'm around the men that you have assembled uh, who are just so proactive about wanting to put family first. So thank you for that and for all you do. Uh, I think it's incredible. Where can our listeners and those watching find out more about you and find out more about Front Row Dads? Well, they should start by listening to your interview on the Front Row Dad podcast. <laughs> 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 no, but if you, if you like to listen to things, then we've got some great conversations there about marriage and parenting and things relating to, you know, life at home. So, um, you know, it's good to take the lifestyle that you've created and, and go learn how to connect with your wife and kids and serve in that way. Cause I, I do believe that if you really want to really want to change the world, you got to go start at home. So, you know, please, please check that out. And then, um, and then, you know, if somebody wants to learn more about the front row dads brotherhood, like they, they crave the community. Like this is all about relationships, resources, and results. That's what the community is built on. And these are learners, people who execute and people who believe in team and uh, everything's at frontroadads.com. So just go there. And then if you need something, you know, e email info at frontroadads.com and somebody from our team will help you out. But th those are the places I would go. I love it. Any last thoughts that you want to share before we wrap things up here today? No, I mean, I just, you know, at the risk of over people like, ah, oh, there's a lot of like loving on each other from John and Justin, right? It's like, <laughs> Dude, there is a lot of love. There's a lot of respect. There's a lot of, there's a lot of appreciation, uh, especially for you, man, that uh, uh, my only final words are for people listening is that if you just found this podcast, you found a really authentic host, a guy who's really walking the talk. And uh, if you've been listening to this podcast for a while and you're a longtime friend, then just stay the course, stay on the journey, because I have a feeling this is just going to keep getting more and more exciting. And, and uh, we're going to keep learning and growing together. So um, I, I, I feel like this is somebody called me recently and they were like about to introduce somebody. So they knew you, but they knew I knew you better. And they're like, come on, man, is Justin the real deal? <laughs> it's just, like, tell me like for real behind the scenes. And I'm like, dude, I, I, he is the real deal through and through this guy's got high integrity. He walks the talk. He does what he says he's going to do. Like, I cannot give a more, a higher endorsement of a human being than I can to Justin and what he's up to. And the results speak for themselves. Like, just look at his life. Just talk to his wife, talk to his daughter. Like, you want to know Justin's impact? Talk to Savannah. She's amazing. You want to, want to see a wife who's being loved and taken care of? Like, meet Jennifer. Like, she, you know, these are the things that Justin's investing in. And you want to how, how, know how Justin shows up for his friends? Like, talk to his friends. But when you look around and you poke around, man, it's a, it's a really wonderful world that you've built. And my, my invite to people is just, uh, you know, um, enjoy the journey with Justin and share the message because this is a, this is an important one, building a lifestyle, uh, rooted in authentic values. I'm in, I'm, I'm in hundred percent. I'm in for life. So thanks for having me, man. This has been great. Thank you so much for the kind words and for friendship and for just, uh, the impact that you've had over the years. I'm so thrilled about this episode and people getting a chance to hear and learn more about you and um, for people to be able to find, uh, you know, and invest in friends where they can grow a, a, a friendship and a relationship the way that you and I have. I feel so blessed for that and being part of your life and I uh, appreciate your time. This has been a, such a fun show and I just knew it would. I've been looking forward to this for a while. And I just want to share with all of our listeners and those watching, um, I, I just encourage you to take some form of action today. Take a step towards financial freedom. Take a step towards uh, a life by design and the life that you want. A life on your terms, not someone else's, not a life on default, not a life on autopilot, but a life that you're inspired uh, and, and uplifted to lead and be part of. So thank you, and we'll catch you next week.